Yes? Huh? Zarek guides me. What do we need? What's the plan? Yes. Hmm. What? Yes. What do you want? Hmm? You have my attention. Yes. Hmm. The rocker. Mm -hmm. Huh? Just give the word. Huh? Hmm. Let me know what you need. Hmm. You have my attention. <gasps> yes? Yes? Uh-huh. What's next? Um, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, will do. Mm hmm.
Let's see. Now would you look at that? Interesting. Let's see. Sure.
What's next? Yes? Now would you look at that? Oh, the corporal. Quite a nice place you found yourself here, I have to say. Thanks again for helping us out in that bloody desert. So, if you don't mind, we'll unload our cart and smithy here. As promised, we can provide you with the best weapons and armor on Nortander. The only thing we need to ask of you is a small donation every time we craft something for you. I know, I know, you saved our lives, but we still need to cover for... No problem. I'll make sure to drop by for... Splendid! Nihal strength, Corporal. Yes, yes, come closer. I'm sure I have just what you need. You know how to bargain, don't you? Huh? Best you talk to my brother. He's good with words. I'm good with the anvil. Huh? Best you talk to my brother. He's good with words. I'm good with the anvil. Interesting. Yes, Corporal? How can I help? Goodbye. Understood. Huh? I'm still wondering what made you leave Kalea and travel the world to study demonology. You're not letting this one go, are you? All right, if your life depends on it, I'll tell you. To make it short, I grew up in the slums of Kalea. A shithole if ever there was one. Just imagine an entire quarter made up of half-ruined shacks with the smell of shit and piss everywhere, and way too many people. Then add the tropical heat to it and you've got the place I grew up in. My father had left right after I was born. My mother is what you call a day laborer, though the days when she wasn't laboring outweighed the ones when she did. Whatever job there was, she took it. Even if it was cleaning the shit out of Calan canals. She worked hard, but it just wasn't enough. We lived in a windowless room, and I shared a bed with my mother for the first 14 years of my life. Long story short, after a while, my mother simply couldn't cover the expenses anymore. The rent for our room went up, and jobs became less and less since the Mage Wars in Nortander also affected the trade in Kalea. So my mother looked for someone to help her out, and found one. A man named Creo. He was a loan shark who had it all. A stupid name and a shady beard, two lackeys who followed him wherever he went, and above all, a complete lack of what other people would call decency. I think I can see where this is going. Sure you can. It's not the most unique of stories, is it? To cut to the chase, one year later we were in massive debt. Creo suggested my mother another way of making up for it. He could fill in the blanks. I was just... too weak. Over and over this fucking bastard came. Had my mother tell me to go for a walk. And every time I had no choice but to obey. Do you have any idea how it feels to her? To be that powerless? I remember one day I looked in the mirror 
and realize how much I hated the boy I saw. I hated his body with all its frail bones, his small arms, his bloodshot wet eyes. And that's when I decided that so the next time he came, I fought back. How did that go? What do you think? He beat me up. It was the same next time and the time after that. At first he found it funny. But after the fourth time, he threatened to kill me. The only thing that stopped him from doing it is because my mother begged him to. On my 14th name day, I left home and joined up with the Kalean Sand Prowlers. My mother begged me not to go. But I just couldn't. Standing there and watching this fucking bastard walk into our room again and again whenever he felt like it. I just couldn't. Dying would be better than staying. The way I figured it was that if I earned enough money to pay mother's debts, Kriya would leave her alone. Once I was strong enough, I'd come back. Wait for him to show up again. And then... I think I can. So who were these sand prowlers? A group of mercenaries. They took me in and trained me. And even though they were skeptical at first, they quickly realized that my determination made up for what my body was lacking. When I was 16 and I discovered my magic, one of their leaders made me his apprentice. The arcane universities are a shithole made up of boy-loving old geezers who care more about how you wear your hair than about your magic. I'll tell you the real thing. And that she did. What about your plan to pay your mother's debts? Did that work out? Well, I thought so at first, but we'll get there. What was it like to work with the Sand Prowlers? Well, if you were hoping for stories of sex, adventure, and intrigue, I have to disappoint you. Most of it was nasty stuff. Fighting in wars which you knew were wrong. Beating up people who were practically helpless. But then again, the Kalean Guard was no better than that. It was a case of pick your poison. Was that Sand Prowler mage also who introduced you to Demon Alpha? What? No. She was a mediocre mage at best. The most powerful thing she could do was lighting someone's hair on fire. Though of course she didn't see it that way. After one year I was already stronger than her. And I started my own studies. So did you ever return to your mother? Of course. On my 18th name day. I had wanted to return earlier, but a contract had me kept overseas for a lot longer than I had expected. I... Oh, sorry. It's... it's strange. What happened? My mother. She was gone. Her room had been cleared out, and the neighbors told me she passed away unexpectedly just three weeks before I arrived. Her heart just stopped beating. I'm sorry. Why? It was a natural death. She was old when she gave birth to me, and the life on the Kalean streets isn't forgiving. In other words, it was bound to happen. I went into the room and looked for our stash. A small casket under the floorboards. I found it, opened it, and saw all the money I'd sent her over the years. So... She never used it to pay Creo as I instructed her. I have no idea why, but my best guess is that she thought it was mine since I earned it. She was that kind of person, you know? No matter how hard fate punched her in the face, she clung on to her ideals. I always did what was right rather than what was good for herself. And look 
what she got in return. Did you ever visit her grave? I did, but it was a mass grave. Dozens of corpses, all piled onto each other, and some earth shoveled on top of it. I threw up when I saw it, and never came back after that. What about Creo? Well, as you can imagine, I went to look for him. Right after I was able to think straight... Where? I don't know. I asked everywhere and everyone who could know, and they either didn't or gave me different information. <sighs> after a while, I gave up. Why? Because people like Creo are just a reality we have to deal with. I could have killed him, but what good would it have done? My mother was dead, and no amount of bloodshed and gut tearing could have changed that. The world doesn't give a fuck about your ideals, Tahar. About doing the right thing. That's just the shit we tell ourselves to help us sleep at night. You eat or you get eaten. It's that simple. I wasn't strong enough when I should have been. And that's why I couldn't help her. That will never happen again. I see where you're coming from. But without ideals, we'd be living in the claws of Nor. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. To wrap up the story, I enrolled at the university from the money my mother saved for me. Turned out the sand prowler mage was wrong. There were some boy-loving professors, but they knew their shit. I studied and practiced until there was nothing left to study. Then I found out about demonology and the power in it. I quit university, and I've been traveling ever since. Taking jobs as a mercenary here and there, but above all, improving my skills. My last stop was Bar Gagora to summon a devourer. Huh. And what are you after? In the long run? I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. Huh. Interesting story. Sure. Hope you're happy. Huh? Never mind. I'll be going. Yes, what is it? Back when we met, you told me about an internal disagreement, which led to many of the guild's mages leaving. What exactly happened? Why do you want to know? No particular reason. I'm simply curious. I see. Well, simply put, the guild had two leaders until half a year ago, me and Lena. Lena and a lot of the other mages felt that they could uphold their neutrality no longer without sacrificing their integrity. You're talking about the persecution of mages? Yes, I am. As Lena said, they are crucifying us, burning us alive, putting masks on our heads that destroy our minds. If there's something wrong with the world, it's people who keep their heads down because they are afraid to stand in for what's right. She did have a point. In her reasoning, she did, yes. 
However, her stance conflicted with everything the Creator's Guild stands for. We preserve knowledge, push forward the boundaries of magic. We do not involve ourselves in power games and politics. Figuratively speaking, a fisher will never be a good military commander, just like a mage will never be a good politician. So where did Lena and the other mages go? I do not know. They left to fight the purity and save mages, but I have not seen them ever since. Could you tell me more about Lena? What was her position in the guild? She was the guild's treasure master. Other than that, I do not know what to tell you. She was quite young when she joined the guild, not even 24 winters old and immensely talented. When it came to mentalism, her skills were unmatched. She was different than the others. She was better than the others. And I always saw a spark of genius in her eyes. And yes, I do know that most people would call that attraction. But it was just a fraction of what made our bond unique. Well, if you ask me, Lena was right. Seeing a crime and not taking action is as bad as committing the crime yourself. I disagree. I have intensively studied human behavior in history, and I've come to the conclusion that exaggerated sense of responsibility is one of the main sources of conflict in this world. People feel the need to take action, even if the events practically do not affect them at all. This creates a dynamic of conflict, like adding oil to the fire. But these events lie in the past. There is no point in discussing them any further, though I had certainly hoped for a different outcome. You seem bitter. As I said, I had hoped for a different outcome. Could you tell me more about the woman who initiated the split? Lena, what was your relationship? I would rather not... Of course, but if you ever want to talk about it... I will tell you. Where did you grow up? You don't look... I do not, that is correct. I grew up in Imperia. Imperia? That's a... I know, but I hardly have any memories. My parents fled from the Civil War and set over to Northander when I was only four years old. So you were refugees? Yes, much like many Nortandians are now. We lived in the Utran lands, and my parents are still there. What's it like to live in Nortander as an imp- Well, it was my impression that Utran people are by nature a lot more skeptical towards outsiders than, for example, the citizens of Everlight. All in all, however, I cannot complain. Both my father and my mother found work quite quickly. And thanks to my occupation as first scholar of the Creator's Guild, they now live a quite comfortable life. And when did you discover your magic? At a very early age. I believe I was seven at that time. I must have had an outbreak, but I can hardly remember any of it. All I know is that my mother's employer, who was a mage himself, immediately took me in. I went to Everlight when I was ten, and did not leave there ever since. Until now. Interesting. You're the first Empyrean I've met. I am not surprised. I've noticed that you use both white and black magic in combat. I've never seen anyone do that before. Don't the two schools exclude each other? Normally, yes. The essence of white and of black magic deeply oppose each other, 
Trying to combine both of them usually has a similar effect on a mage's mind as adding water onto a patch of burning oil. I, however, never had that problem. The first time I found out was at the Arcane University in Greyfell where I studied. The white magic spell I had cast on a rabbit to heal his wounded paw accidentally killed it. I was very young at that time, and I knew my professor would be upset if he found out, so I channeled my energy on undoing what I had done. As a result, I created an undead rabbit. It immediately went feral, and I put it back to sleep. But rather than feeling the terrible headache that had been described to us as an effect of combining these two schools, I felt a slight sense of, well, exhilaration. I secretly continued these experiments during my studies, and found out that whatever it is that causes this mental discord among normal mages did not affect me. Do you have an explanation for this? No, I do not. Maybe it has to do with the way my mind is structured, or maybe it is a simple... Huh. Well, that's odd. Goodbye. Yes, what is it? Goodbye. Yes. Yes. Got it. To this day, the Shaper's magical and technological prowess remains unrivaled. One thing is clear. None of their marvels would have been possible without an incredible amount of magical energy.
Okay, I'm ready. Sure this place isn't gonna blow up once we insert the second stone, Iskrim? What? Uh, no, I, I don't think that's likely. All right, here we go. Blasted, blistering blazes! I, I don't know what to say. This, this is amazing! But it seems like it worked. We've restored the Nexus to full power. How are you feeling, Iana? Overwhelmed. But it's bearable. What now, though? Is it strong enough to perform this joining ritual? It should be. And you, Tahar, should be the one to do it. You need to connect your mind to the Nexus. That way, you might be able to sense who or whatever is sending out the song. What do you say? Are you ready? Shouldn't we... I don't know. How? Putting on a Shaper costume? Now's as good a time as any. Fair point. All right, Iskrim. Good. Then step into the forge. Just like that? Yeah. If I'm right, the rest will happen by itself. Hmm. And what now? It... Is it... is it over? Yes, I... I think so. By the Guardians, that was... I don't know what just happened. Describe. There were... voices... screams... Thoughts... Images... How do you feel now? I mean, has anything... changed? I think so. Yes. I feel... I don't know. Clearer. As if something in my mind... Then it worked! Niehaus, Hammer, we did it! You joined yourself with the Nexus! So, I am telepathic now? You're not a dream weaver. I'd feel it if that were the case. I don't think you are, but you're connected to this place now, and therefore to the Shaper memories. As to what that ultimately means for you, well, f does that mean we can finally locate the cause of the song? You tell me. Think of the song, Tahar. Close your eyes. What do you feel? What do you hear? What do you see? Save me. The, the fate. 
failure. That's, that's what you are. No. That's... That's impossible. What is it? My father. I... Your father? So you think he's behind this? I also heard the voice of a woman. She whispered something. Woman. Now this is, uh, interesting. But I still don't understand. Do you really think your father is involved in the blood burn? I don't think so. There's more to it, but yes. My father is involved in this somehow. This is helpful, but it still does not tell us where to start searching. Think hard, Tahar. Is there anything else? Yes. There were sounds. Drips, crickets, flies, but... The eye. Your father's laboratory. Tiara's breath, of course. The eye? You mean the marshlands? Yes. My father had a laboratory there, in the old abandoned manor of House Waite. Nobody was allowed to follow him there, not even Rohan or I. Well, sounds like we have a lead. The Bloodborne and the Song of the White are somehow connected to your father. So it seems. Yes. Tahar, I... maybe... What? N never mind. It doesn't matter. Yes. Rowan, tell me. There's nothing to tell. Well, if you say so. I'll send a messenger to inform Lacan as soon as possible. He'll want to be there. Let's get prepared. How do you feel? You sounded a bit... lost before. I guess I was. My father's voice, it brought back memories. And not exactly good ones, I suppose. Well, I hope we can find some answers in the marshlands. Is there anything else you wish to talk about? If not, I best get prepared. Either way, pleasure speaking with you. Hope this wasn't too grim for you, but then again, you asked for it. Sure. Take care, Iskrim.
Huh? I'll be off. How are you holding up? Telepathy, visions, now your father. Must have been quite a whirlwind. I'm fine. It was just... Figures. Now let's go find some answers, shall we? A deadly swamp, an old ruined castle, insects everywhere. If that doesn't sound like fun, I don't know what does. Let's see. Corporal, need anything? Goodbye. Will do.
is huge. Understood. We need. What's next? Got it. Mm -hmm. They are threat. We're in for a fight. Damn it! I need healing! Mm -hmm. Not now. Will do. Understood. Yes. Ah, a golem. Don't let down your guard. Got it. Whatever's necessary. What's next? Yes. I can't focus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tiara's breath worth for a fight. What do we need? We'll do. Understood. Got it. Hmm. Will do. What's next? Got it. Ah! You read my mind. Not now. Yes. Understood. Yes. 
What's next? Mm -hmm. They will fall. Mm -hmm. Will do. Understood. Got it. Mm hmm. Blazes, that thing is huge. Whatever's necessary. Hmm. Yes. What do we need? They will fall. Understood. You read my mind. My breath. We're in for a fight. What's next? <sighs> we'll do. Whatever's necessary. Focus. read my mind. What's next? Thank you. 
Of the few refugees who make it to Everlight, many are shocked to find that their troubles do not end there. Though its neutrality as a city-state left it largely unscathed during the Mage Wars, the city has its own mountain of problems to struggle with. The biggest ones being the ever-growing gap between the rich and the poor, an uncontrollable rise in crime, and the purity of Light's aggressive crusade for new followers. <laughs>